Shut up. I wasn't talking. But you were going to. But how did you? I watch you. What? You talk to people far too much. You are predictable. Weak. I don't like where this is going. We can fix you, though. Ramp you up. You're going to turn me into a ramp? No, underprepared man who is supposed to save us all. I am going to make you stronger. Ladies, gentlemen, and masters of all ages, welcome one and all to a little bit of a dive into an extremely cool system new to Monster Hunter Rise. Well, I say new, but if you spent any time with Safi Jeeva weapons in Monster Hunter World Iceborne, you might recognize a few of the basic principles of this ramp up system. First of all, what exactly is it? In a nutshell, it is the equivalent of weapon augmenting from the most recent game, but a bit more specialized and available starting after your first rampage mission. These allow you to specialize your weapon of choice just that little bit further and can apply to every weapon in the game. However, unlike weapon augments, the options that you can choose from are unique to each individual weapon, with weapon trees tending to share options across weapon types. For example, the Izuchi Hammer, Izuchi Greatsword, Izuchi Hunting Horn, all of these would have the same ramp up options. There is no randomization at all in this sense. They just are what they are and it is based on the monster first and then a little bit of the weapon second. But this ain't just your mama's weapon upgrades, well, unless she also plays Monster Hunter Rise, in which case they are and also hello to your mother. Sure, there are a number of basic statistical upgrade ramp ups that simply make the weapon a little bit stronger in clear cut ways, but there are a few far more interesting ones that will lead to some incredibly cool builds in the future. From Brutal Strikes, which every weapon has access to and gives your negative critical strikes a chance to deal a load more damage instead of making negative crits a potential positive as opposed to the negative that they are originally, or particularly unique weapon specific ones like Hellion Mode for dual blades, making every hit in Demon Mode have 100% crit chance. Sir, what? Okay, that's a little bit overpowered, maybe. Yeah, okay, they range from slight statistical changes to full-on playstyle and build-defining augmentations to your weapon. Before we get into the specifics of all the different ramp-up options, however, let's talk about how you unlock them. As has already been mentioned, you will first gain access to the system after your first rampage. The main reason for this is that the actual materials used to ramp up your weapons are rampage-based, mainly being the varying levels of defender ticket that you get for doing rampages either in low or high rank, with some particularly rare ramp up options requiring specific monster parts from late game rampage quests that I will not name in particular. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. All right, now that we are past that, let's get into the specifics of what each and every ramp up skill is and what they do. First, we'll talk about the pure statistical upgrades, then some of the more interesting general ones, then a few weapon specific ramp up skills, and afterwards we will cap this whole thing off with a look at the specific rampage weapons, which utilize ramp up skills a little bit differently. So to begin with, let's talk actual numbers for the straight up statistical upgrades. It is possible to see the ramp up ability attack boost 1, 2, 3, or 4, with 1 being a plus 4 attack increase, 2 being a plus 6 attack increase, 3 being a plus 8 attack increase, and 4 being a plus 10 attack increase. It is also possible to see affinity boost level 1 to 4, with rank 1 being 4% extra affinity, rank 2 being 6%, rank 3 being 8%, rank 4 being 10%. Then there is the equivalent ramp up for defense. Defense boost rank 1 to 3, and these ranks are worth 10 defense each. There is also element boost rank 1 to 4 for whatever element that the weapon has, with rank 1 being plus 4 of that element, rank 2 being plus 6, rank 3 being plus 8, and rank 4 being plus 10. It's all very uniform for the most part. Then, of course, there is the status version of this, status boost rank 1 or 2, for whichever status is on the weapon. For every status except for sleep, rank 1 is worth plus 3 and rank 2 is worth plus 5. However, for specifically sleep, this boost is plus 2 for rank 1 and plus 4 for rank 2. Those are all the very cookie cutter clear in what they do ones though and how they will affect your character, they're very obvious. But then we swing around to some of the ones that are a touch more interesting. Ones that don't have particularly defined numbers, or at least they don't actively tell you the defined numbers in the description. And as such, my impressions of them are all from our own experience with them so far and should be taken with a slight grain of salt. 
Going alphabetically then, we have anti-aquatic species, which is also seen in a different place as anti-flying species and dragon exploit, but for different types of monsters. This does what it says on the tin. It increases your damage against a very particular type of creature, as defined by the category in the hunter's notes. In our limited testing with this one, it didn't seem to be too powerful, but it is definitely interesting to have the idea of a weapon specialized at killing only a few monsters in the game. After that is one of my favorite theoretical ones, Brutal Strike. Hey, turn that frown upside down, Abe. Which, as I mentioned near the top of the video, has a chance of turning your negative critical strikes into far stronger attacks. This effect has a reasonably high chance of happening, and the damage is quite strong. So paired with a weapon with enough negative affinity, it just might do the trick. Past this, we have Buddy Rally, which increases the attack power and defense of your Palico and Palamute. Dulling Strike, which is a chance to increase your damage when attacking with a weapon that has green sharpness or lower. This one has a relatively low activation chance, but increases its chance to activate the lower that your sharpness gets. It is entirely possible that there will be some super crazy niche build between this bludgeoner and mind's eye that will make this one work, but on a surface level, I just see it struggling to surpass the actual damage bonus of just having blue sharpness on the weapon as a base. After this is Elemental Exploit, which increases your damage when exploiting a foe's element weakness, and also various Elemental Blight Exploit skills, which increase your damage to monsters that are afflicted with the blight that is mentioned. Then is the particularly unique to Magna Malo ramp up skill Magna Malo Soul, which increases your attack power while afflicted with Hellfire Blight, which definitely has the potential for some very interesting synergy. And also we have Master Rider, which increases the damage that you inflict while Wyvern Riding and increases the Wyvern Ride timer. This one isn't very effective, but again, if it's a particular niche, all of these will somehow make someone happy somewhere, and that is the true beauty of the system. Past this, we have Silkbind Boost, which increases the damage of your Silkbind attacks. This one definitely has potential with some of the weapons that have high damage Silkbind moves. Then we have Small Monster Exploit, which increases your damage to small monsters if you want that for some reason. And then finally, for the generic every weapon type ramp up skill, is Spirit Bird Doubled, which occasionally Occasionally increases the effect of spirit birds. This one won't increase your maximum pedal ace buff though, so it really is just more of a convenience thing than a straight up buff. As you can see already, there's quite a lot of intriguing things going on here. A lot of potential to build full on armor sets around in order to see if we can truly make the most out of every playstyle possible in this game. But I haven't even shown you everything. No, there are still a select few left to put in front of your eyes on this bright, bright screen. Please turn me down, being this bright hurts. Stop it, you're scaring people. Sorry, I like existential humor. Actually, 10 of the weapon types in the game have their own unique ramp up skills. Well, at least somewhat unique. Some of these you will see quite commonly among that weapon type, and others will only be on one or two options in the entire game. Greatsword and Charge Blade both share the skill Defense Grinder with two ranks. Rank one makes you not lose sharpness at all when guarding attacks, and rank two actually restores some of your sharpness while guarding, which is a very cool concept. Dual Blades gets, as I showed you earlier, Hellion mode, forcing every attack to be a critical hit if you are in demon mode at the cost of double sharpness loss. Trust me when I say the way that these skills work out in the end game, 100% crit is totally worth working in a bit more sharpness to your build to make it actually function together. This is one that is very, very rare, but definitely has me extremely intrigued. Gunlance gets Wormstake boost, which raises the damage level of your Wormstake cannon by one, making your spike just a little bit spikier. Hunting Horn gets maximum volume, which increases the range of your performances once they are activated. This one has some value in the right places, but is quite niche. Switch Axe gets boost equipped coating for just 10 extra element on their weapons file. And then also one called Coding Switch Boost, which grants special effects to files when executing morph attacks. This one could absolutely lead to some quality builds as well if paired with the right armor skills. Insect Glaive gets Kinsect level boost, which raises your Kinsect level by one. Both Light and Heavy Bowgun share ammo based ramp ups. Blank effect rank one and two, with the blank there being whatever type of ammo it is in particular. Ammo effect rank one lets you use level one and two of that type and increases your capacity of that ammo. Ammo effect rank two lets you use level three ammo of that type and increases the capacity once again. Bows get lasting arc shot, which makes the arc shot buff last a little bit longer. And sleep 
poison or paralysis coating boost, which strengthens the related coating on the weapon. And there you have it, all of the rampage skills that you will find on your average generic weapons with a few left out, a couple of which are for monsters that I refuse to spoil in the middle of the video and we'll talk about at the very end for those who just desperately want to know about them, but then also there is the whole rampage weapon system. The other thing that you unlock after finishing your first rampage is the rampage weapon tree. Every weapon has one. There are two main unique things about these weapons. Firstly, you can actually change the color of some parts of them to whatever you want, which personally as a fan of pink is something that I heavily appreciate. Secondly, they have multiple slots for ramp up skills. Now, before you get a little bit too hype, they unfortunately do not get any of the crazy, ridiculous ramp up skills from the other weapons. Mostly it's just a bit of statistical stuff that you can use to build them up a bit stronger with a few slight exceptions based on weapon type. Rampage weapon ramp up slots also work a little bit uniquely from the other ramp up slots. You don't just have three choices from the list. No, they are split into groups. You can have one from one group, one from the second group, and one from the third group, with ranged weapons getting even more complex up at five ramp up skill options. They have a much greater range of customizability than any other weapon in the game, as you can truly tailor this one specifically to your needs. For some weapon types, the rampage weapon is just sort of, yeah, it's okay, but nothing too crazy. But for other weapons, if augmented with the right ramp up skills and put in the right build, they can actually be the strongest in the game. Each of these is super unique to their own weapon class though, with many of them having unique specific ones and having slightly different statistical values depending on the weapon in particular. They're very cool and you should definitely have a look at yours. Play around with it a bit. Now I'm going to start giving you a very long, incredibly long warning where the screen has even gone black. Been black for multiple seconds now and will continue to be black for multiple more seconds as you should be looking away from the screen starting now if you don't want to see the ramp up skills for the hidden monsters in Monster Hunter Rise. Audio will be safe for you to listen to, visuals however will have the monsters names on the screen. Your warning to look away if you don't want to see them is running out in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and here you go. The last ramp up skills. I won't say anything about them, but you can see them right now if you would like to. And they are going away now. All right, everyone, I have been caught in that hour. You can look back at the screen now. And this has been your proper primer on the ramp up skill system and understanding how to properly power up your weapons in Monster Hunter Rise. Are you as big of a fan of the system as I am? Which ramp up skill causes you the most excitement? Like if you like the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time stay sweet Josh cotton and hollow with the videos dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment yes I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye